Welcome back to Race Week Illustrated Garage Talk. On Sunday, June 2nd, fans and friends of racing history gathered at J.B. Day's Riverbend Racing Museum in Easley, South Carolina for the annual reunion and party to honor the late Raymond Parks, who was such a good friend of Mr. Day. Such racing luminaries as David Pearson, Bud Moore, Marvin Panch, Tiger Tom Pistone, Rex White, Dink Widenhouse, Bruce Brantley, and more gathered to share stories and renew old friendships. But center stage at this year's gathering was the late Tim Flock, who was recently announced as a 2014 inductee into the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Flock was a great friend to Mr. Day, and he was on the minds of many of those in attendance. We had the opportunity to ask several of those in attendance about their thoughts on Tim and his impending induction. And we're here with Francis Flock, Tim Flock's wife, and Francis. I saw you on television when they made the announcement. I saw you jumping up and down, and I was jumping up and down back home in Commerce, Georgia. Tell me how it felt when they called Tim's name and you knew he was going to be a member of the class of 2014 to the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Well, it was kind of, it's kind of hard to explain. My heart just absolutely skipped a beat. I couldn't hold back the joy and the tears. It was just absolutely wonderful after waiting so long to have him inducted into the Hall of Fame. And I can hardly wait until January till I have to get up there before all these people and, and, and give a speech. But I know that he'll be there with me in spirit. And our whole family is just as uh, happy as we can be. It's been a long time coming, but uh, it's well deserved because I think the people need to know more about the history of racing. Uh, Tim was a great ambassador for racing. How would, how would Tim have felt about this, considering everything that he went through with NASCAR, he and both of his brothers, everything he went through to finally get the recognition that he has deserved for so long. Well, he would be just thrilled to death because he always said that we needed a uh, NASCAR needed to build a Hall of Fame in, in Charlotte uh, the, to preserve all the uh, legend racing stuff back then. So I know he would just he he probably would have been jumping up through the ceiling higher even than I did. <laughs> And to go in with the people that he's going in to lead the class, it, him, then Maurice Petty and Fireball Roberts and Jack Ingram and, and Dale Jarrett, all standouts, for him to lead that class, how does that make you feel? That That is just unbelievable. I couldn't believe that he went in with a 76% uh, of the boats and in that class with all the other uh, good people that has raced and, and has went forth, I think, think it's just terrific. Well, congratulations to you and to the family, and uh, congratulations from all of us. Thank you. It was a pleasure. And we're here with uh, Buzz McKim from the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Buzz, big announcement here recently. The five uh, members of the class of 2014 to go into the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Five very deserving people, but of course, as a Georgian, I'm a little bit biased towards seeing our first Georgia driver, Tim Flock, go in. But tell us about how important it is for these five guys to go into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, it really is important, and it's hard to believe that uh, these will be our uh, 25th member, you know, 20 to 25th member, 21st to 25th. It seems like we were just opened recently, and now here already in our fifth class. But this class is great. We love diversity in the classes, and we great we have a great diverse class this year. We have our first engine builder in um, Maurice Petty. We have our first late model slash Bush Series champion in Jack Ingram. We also have the pioneers of Tim Flock, Fireball Roberts, and then a uh, more recent star, uh, Dale Jarrett. So we have a little bit of everybody in there. And, and speaking about Tim and about Fireball, while everybody is deserving, it's especially nice to see the legends and the pioneers getting uh, their, their due. And we've heard a little bit of talk that uh, from some folks that they're worried that over the next few years you're going to be losing more and more people who knew who these legends were. How tough does it make your job to get the word out there so that people understand who these guys were and why they are still so important? Well, yeah, it's vital. Uh, we really have to keep that history alive. That's what the Hall of Fame does, basically. But still, uh, you need, need to uh, really impress upon folks the, the impact that these early pioneers had on the sport. You say, well, you look at the record, and uh, you know, Red Byron only won two races, and only ran for a few years. Well, it goes so far beyond that. The same way with Raymond Parks. He was only in the sport for a few years, but, but his impact was incredible. And there may not have been a NASCAR if it wasn't for Raymond. And what he did for racing leading up to the founding of NASCAR, and then how he kept things afloat after NASCAR was founded. And uh, it's, it's like Abner Doubleday. You know, you wouldn't have had baseball if it wasn't for him. Well, it's, it's like that with these pioneers, and we, we have to figure out a way to make sure that these guys aren't lost. It, it's, it's just vital. 
And now, you know, Tim Flock is one of my personal heroes. So, of course, you know, I was jumping up and down when that, that announcement came down. But I know Fireball Roberts, one of your uh, heroes, and a lot of people don't realize and don't grasp, he was really the first superstar of the sport. Yeah, he really was. He was the first name that was known to the general public outside of racing. You know, you didn't have to be a, a racing fan to know that there was this guy, Fireball Roberts, who drove a race car. He was the first NASCAR driver to go overseas. He raced at Le Mans. Uh, he was also you know, kind of like the first household word. Uh, when it came to super speedways, when, when uh, Daytona was open in 59, he was the first star of the big tracks, the high speed. He was also very media savvy and real, real sharp, very well spoken, well educated. And he was really a prototype for what we have today. Congratulations on a great class. Look forward to it in January. Well, thank you very much. Hope you'll be there. Mr. Day, you were a close friend of Tim Flock's. I know he was very uh, important to you and very special in your life. So tell me, how does it feel uh, to see him go into NASCAR's Hall of Fame and get the recognition that he deserves? Well, he ought to went in there one of the first ones. He was my close friend, and and we we loved each other to death. And I miss him, and he was just really my buddy. And I'm glad he's in there now. Rex, you were a contemporary of Tim Flocks. You were friends with Tim. Tell me how it feels to have seen him go into the Hall of Fame. Hey, I was glad to see him go in. Very deserving person. Got uh, good stats, a uh, good person, uh, lived a good life, uh, was a good father, good race car driver, great person. And, and you're up to going to the Hall of Fame as well, too. We'd love to see you in there. How does, how does it feel just to have been nominated for that? Well, it's great. I mean, just to get a nominated, if I never get in, is a, a big a big achievement. Think of the people that's not nominated. So it's a great honor to be nominated. And we are here with uh, Gordon Perkle, chairman of the uh, Georgia Racing Hall of Fame and proprietor of the famed Dawsonville Pool Room. And you were a friend of Tim Flock, so tell me, how it feels to see Tim go into the NASCAR Hall of Fame? Uh, I'm very, very proud to see Tim Frock go in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Tim was a great friend of mine, most fun, loving, love life better than anybody I know. He was fun to be around. And how does it feel to have the first Georgian go into the NASCAR Hall of Fame? It, it feels awful good. If you know, we should have two Georgians going in. If he, if he could have went in with Raymond Parks, I'd have felt a whole lot better. And we want to thank Mr. Day for allowing us to come to the party, and we're looking forward to it again next year. Time for us to take another break. When we come back, we'll take a look at racing action from Montgomery Motor Speedway, and we'll talk about the upcoming World Crown 300 and the history of Gresham Motorsports Park with legendary racer Tiger Tom Pistone. You're watching Race Week Illustrated Garage Talk. We'll be right back. For 30 years, the best of the best racers in the country have traveled to Jefferson, Georgia to fight for the title King of the Short Tracks. The fight continues at Gresham Motorsports Park as Slack Auto Parts presents the 30th annual World Crown 300 on July 4th. The fireworks will shine bright on the high-banked half-mile as Dawsonville, Georgia's Chase Elliott looks to defend his crown against fast aces like Bubba Pollard, Augie Grill, Daniel Hemrick, T.J. Reed, Spencer Davis, and more. And when the action is over on the track, things will get hot overhead with a huge fireworks display sponsored by Royal Oak. Get $5 off with a discount coupon available at Slacks Auto Parts. Active and retired military and their families get in free with a military ID while supplies last courtesy of Kipper Tools. Tickets are $30 for adults, $25 for seniors, kids 12 and under free. Go to racegmp.com for more information. Come see a king crowned at the Slack Auto Parts World Crown 300 July 4th at Gresham Motorsports Park in Jefferson, Georgia, the king of the short tracks. 